Well, good to see this young fighter make the walk here tonight. His takedowns are really some of the best in the game. So explosive, great technique behind them. Certainly you see shades of his collegiate wrestling career. His opponent's got to watch out for those, but even an opponent with good takedown defense will succumb to this guy's shots. No telegraph behind him. When this guy wants to take you down, more often than not, he succeeds. This guy has devastating choking technique. If he can get a hold of your neck, he can close it off like very few in the world. Still one of the younger fighters on the UFC roster. Here is the flyweight contender, Sergio Pettis. Outstanding kickboxing game. Pretty opportunistic submission guy as well. He's been in there with a lot of the UFC's best in the flyweight division. Now the focus, Joe, is on trying to get the opposition out of there. Most of its wins have been by decision. They have been dominant. Now a finish would be useful for Sergio Pettis tonight. This guy has world-class choking techniques in all varieties, be it guillotine, choke, rear naked, Dars, anaconda. If this guy gets a hold of your neck, you've got problems. tail of the tape for this heavyweight fight. Well, how about the age discrepancy here? More than 15 years apart. Some differences in height and reach. Let's get it started. Here's Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds of the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 206 pounds. Fighting out of Osaka, Japan, Big Daddy. And now he his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Taekwondo fighter, holding a professional record of 17 wins, five losses. He stands five feet six inches tall, weighing in at 125 pounds. Fighting out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Sergio Afina. Adams. And the action begins, referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean, third man in the octagon for this Ready. one. Ready. All right, so this UFC Grand Prix tournament is coming up next. This big match. Oh! right hand. Pettis gets tagged with a kick now. Let's see if he can wrap. And there's a takedown attempt. Also, he gets clipped once again here, Joe, and he continues to be vulnerable by leaning in. He's keeping his head on the center line. He's got to change things up a little bit here. Nice kick right there. Whoa! And another one. He's in trouble. He's looking for that left. Effective strike there by Pettis. Well, straight right hand has been a good weapon for him. He misses with it there. Big power shot there. Just out of the range with that right hand. Worked hard for it. He's now got double underhooks in the clinch. And now trying to take the back. And they move out of the clinch. Nice hook there. Oh, how about that? He lands a 
huge kick. So under a minute to go here in what has been a competitive and action-packed first round. Nice job with that follow-up shot as well. And plenty of time with which to work. 30 seconds to go in the round. Nice body kick. Really missed with that right hand. Nice straight right lance. Oh, good kick. Wow! Oh, Second round, straight ahead. Oh, what a way to end the round. Saved by the bell. He got stunned by a huge shot right before the horn. And now, a little bit gingerly, he makes his way back to the stool. And he's only got 60 seconds to recover here. So we'll see if his corner, physically, mentally, can keep this fighter in the fight. And here is one more massive punch he lands that really stuns. What an action-packed round. It looked like it almost ended on multiple occasions. It's okay to me. You've taken way bigger shots than that. All right, that was nothing. Brittany Palmer is in the building. Here we are, early round two. Starting off this round, you've got to think he's probably still hurt from that last round. He's going to want to move and avoid taking damage early. Roundhouse kick, Joe. Unable to find the target. Trying to establish that jab once again. How about that chin? Can we show you the total strikes? Oh, well, you can't enter the pocket there unprotected. You got to figure out a way to get your guard up a little bit. Another kick lands. Oh. Yeah, looks a little wobbly on his feet. He's in oh. big, big trouble. Ah. Back to the feet. <laughs> big body shot. shot. To body. Constantly a moving target. So a much different approach from him here in round two. Took him a while to find the range, get in his striking rhythm. He has found it here, and as a result, has really picked up the pace in round two. He's inside control here. Well, you don't want to spend too much time fighting off of your back, Joe, but pretty good work here from the bottom by Pettis. He lands a big shot from the bottom. Into side control again. He's going for the north-south position. He's looking for the windshield wiper choke. He might get a finish here. He might be forced to tap. This choke is getting tighter and tighter. That's it. That's it. Use great technique to get the choke and get the win. Well, yeah, Joe, he told us during fight week he's been working dutifully on his submission game and he was going to look for an opening here tonight. Safe to say he found one near-perfect setup on the choke. It was sunk in deep, and his opponent had no choice but to tap out or go to sleep. And here we can see it again. That's a real tight choke here. And finally... One more time, no choice but to tap. So there he is, your winner by submission. That could hold up as one of the better subs of the year. Near perfect execution tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the referee Herb Gage called a stop to this contest at three minutes, 50 seconds of round number two. Deploying the winner by tap out. Big
So there he is, your winner by way of submission, and how good was that? I mean, you talk about maximizing a UFC showcase, and that's a great example of doing just that. You see him sharing a moment here with his coaches, his training partners, and you can be sure that with the hard work done and the hay in the barn, that these guys are gonna be celebrating deep into the night after